Greetings, fellow scribes! Welcome back to the Archive! This week, I bring you another Tales from the Archive! These are stories where I share something that happened in a game I've run or played in. Normally, I do these as sort of a demonstration of how players can think out of the box. You know, or give new players ideas. Or just share ideas that GMs can use. This week, however, I'm going to do something a little bit different. You see, every table at some point has a player get really, really lucky with the dice. Maybe it's a night where they can't roll below 15 on the die, even after changing the dice. Well, this is a story about how a bunch of freakishly awesome rolls change the game. Like, literally, change the outcome of what was supposed to happen. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as I tell you the tale of how a Navario got lucky with a lance. To begin this, I need to talk about some of the rules that were in effect and some of the way I interpreted things. So, first off, the player was running an Avario. This character was a winged elf and was specialized in the large horse lance, the heavy horse lance. Now, heavy horse lances had a rule that if you were using them from the back of a charging mount, you doubled the damage. Well, why is this? It's because, you know, you a lance is designed for all that power from the mount, which is greater than what a human or elven frame can do, can, can push itself. However, a elf in a dive with this lance, I ruled, when, when the player asked me, was the same as if they were riding a horse because they've got the force of gravity adding to them as well as their own muscle strength and all that. So the player goes into a dive and something you have to understand is when you roll a 20 to hit, you double the damage in AD&D 2nd edition. It was an automatic, you doubled the damage. So what this meant was a heavy horse lance normally against something that is larger than man sized deals three die six damage. In a dive, this meant it would do six die six. And on a critical, it would do 12 die six. In a natural 20, it would do 12 die six. This is important. This is step one. Step two is spell jamming ships. One hull point equals 10 hit points. So if your damage does not exceed 10, you don't hurt the ship at all. So you have to roll more than 10 on 10 on your damage attack. Okay. The third factor is under certain circumstances. If the roll of the attacking weapon is high enough, note a, in this case, a, significant weapon is a weapon that's going to do at least one hull point. And then the attack roll has to be 
at a certain level, like, oh, say, a uh, natural 20. If the ship reaches 50% of its hull points in damage, if the ship reaches 25% of its hull points in damage, or a series of other special conditions. But the big ones here are if the attacking weapon rolls high enough, the percentage of the hull points damaged. All right. The other thing is, at the level this PC was at, they were getting two attacks in a round. So they got two attacks on the ship. Only one of them was the dive, though. So we're not going to worry about that part. Well, just yet. And the, there is a table to determine what happens when a spell jamming ship suffers a critical hit. So let's start going through this whole story. The player was a Navario, so they're a winged elf, and they have flown into the other ship's air envelope. And they made the decision they were going to dive on the ship. All right. I give them a chance to roll. Player rolls a natural 20. Well, okay. They've gotten... So that means they've inflicted a critical. It means they have already at this point inflicted a critical. If they manage to inflict the hull point. Well, with 12 dice, they're going to inflict a minimum of one hull point. So they are inflicting a critical on the ship. And so they roll their damage. It's not a lot of damage. 12 dice 6 ended up being like 46, so four hull points. Now understand, this ship has 18 hull points. So they've done a little less than a quarter. But they rolled four Loss, they were the result of loses 10 hull points. Bam. That reduced the ship from its 14 hull points to 4. And then that generated, first off, that dropped it below five hit points, 50% of its hit points. So they then rolled their next critical. Spelljammer Shock. Spelljammer Shock. Basically, they hit the helm and put the helmsman in a coma. Okay. So at this point... This player has basically dove in through the top deck and in. It hit the hull, hit the helm. Really hurt the helmsman. And the player then says he's going to attempt to crash through the side with the lance for his second attack. It's like, okay. Now, understand, technically, the ship has taken 50% damage. I'm only letting one of the criteria for this 
hit. Basically, the attack roll was one critical, the damage would cause another. If he wants to do a third, he has to actually inflict one whole point of damage. And he rolls a total of 12 on 3 die 6. This does one hull point. This causes one single roll for a crit. And he rolled hull hold. Basically, what this means is, as he dove through the side of the ship, he created enough suction behind him as he burst through the hull that he drug 1d6 of the crew out. Let, let's just look at this. This ship had a minimum crew of 8, a maximum crew of 18. And he rolled a six for how many crew he took out. So he took a third of the crew out. Not to mention what the archer on the deck of their ship had done whenever their ships closed to close enough that their air envelopes merged. Because that's when you can do things like fire on another ship with a bow and arrow. <clears throat> Anything more than that, you're just too far away. Now, here's what was supposed to happen. Their ship was an unarmed, the player character ship was an unarmed ship called the Damselfly. They basically found it and were flying out into space with it. They were supposed to be found by this ship, this heavier duty ship, captured, taken prisoner, and it was going to be the whole, oh look, the PCs learn about it the hard, learn about space the hard way. It didn't happen because they crippled this enemy ship in one attack, in one round of attacks, <clears throat> and that is how they ended up as as they ended up well basically killing the rest of the enemy crew and going through the ship they ended up kind of towing it to a spaceport that they found uh, charts to get to and selling it for a bounty because they were hit by known pirates. The ship was actually being run by a bunch of pirates of Gith. So, yeah, it was meant to be a not nice intro. But that is how one player through freakishly good roles change the game. Next week, I will begin talking about a series on the factions of Starfleet Battles. Until then, I'd like you all to remember to have fun and keep gaming. <laughs>